Unlike Mr. Wives' song I really like, we will be coloring inside the lines today with Peacemaker's 1919. More specifically, though, we will be actually making the lines and coloring uh, inside uh, because this is a border dispute game. I don't know if there are any other border dispute games like this, so I'm counting big points on originality here. Uh, the whole game is basically a war has happened and has ended. Don't have to worry about the war, it's in the past. The present, though, is more complicated because you have been tasked to redraw the border lines of the new world and being that you are a third party you want to make it as fair as possible to both regions and the people in them this is this is very different and i really really like the concept so uh let's go take a look inside what's under the hood and play around with its wires and paintbrushes and whatnot Let's start off with the basics first. This is your map. Well, it's part of the map. There are a few levels, including some really, really hard ones that I'm actually really interested in getting my hands on. Uh, you are, like I said, redrawing the borders of a war-torn country, and you want to be as fair as possible, but you have to keep in mind there's a lot of factor- well, not a lot, but enough factors to make this a challenging puzzle. But before we get into that, let's start off with the basics of what you'll be doing. All you need is your mouse and left-clicking. Uh, you have your little cursor. I don't know. I know you can't see the mouse part of my cursor, but hopefully you can see the uh, circle part that is floating around all over the place. Uh, on our left-hand side here, we have our little tabs. Uh, the first tab is switching between which color you use. You can either be blue or red. Clicking on them or pressing the number buttons will do so. The next two buttons are to make your mouse cursor either larger or smaller. So we're getting in those fine details and in some maps you're gonna want to do that. The next map is the terrain tool. Clicking on it will A, both highlight the mountainous and natural terrain defier, not defiers, differentiating um, dividers, I'll say. The natural dividers of the world. Uh, clicking on that will show up, you know, where they are, you'll get a little special ability on your mouse, which means you can't um, color over certain spots. It, it, I'll, I'll show you more once we uh, actually start mapping out the map. Uh, we have a zoom in function, which can can probably be really handy. I haven't used it quite yet. We're on a later level, so I can show you some more stuff, but uh, I'm, I'm very much expecting to be using this in later levels. Uh, the next button is the lengthen or, you know, redraw freehand thing. It's basically a line tool, because lines are very important. Revert that one back. And then we have the last one, which actually matters kind of a lot. It is the exclaves button. Now, exclaves are little areas inside of bigger areas that are not their areas, if that makes sense to you. Basically, um, right here is a bl was, is blue area. Actually, we can go to the this map here, the population and topography map. Yeah, you're going to be learning a bit about maps. Uh, as you can see, we have the red divide and the blue divide, but there's this weird little red splotch right over here that, um, well, that's not connected to big red splotch. That is an exclave, and if you click on the exclave button, it'll just wipe that and refigure out stuff. 
Simple as that. You don't have to worry about it or color all that in. You can just press the button and it's fine. Exclaves are bad. They bring your score down and you don't you don't really want to actually have any of them in your map. You can also press the little exclave button and they'll pop up because some of them can be very small. So but you know there will be little exclave tab thingies. You, you, You'll see when you play it, and you should play this. So that's on the left side. That is basically your controls of the game. Uh, on the right side is where the gameplay actually happens or gives you objectives. You are based on score in this game, and a few factors vary into that score. But basically, you want to get gold score. You have three score objectives, bronze, silver, and gold. If you can get gold, that is your best. But if you can manage your bronze or silver, that's okay too. Once one of those objectives have been met, the both sides of the parties of leading countries will be like, all right, that's fair enough. We'll sign the beat, we'll sign the uh, border thing. We'll, sp we'll sign it, we'll be good and then, you know, move on to the next level. Or you can go really, really fine and, like, really detail it up to be a really good map maker, you know, and get that gold star. Mmm, it's very rewarding when you get that gold star. And then also, as more stuff underneath of it is, you know, score factors and stuff. <coughs> so... <coughs> I've been talking a lot in the past few days, a lot of recordings, but let's not talk about that. Let's actually get into the game. Now, as it is at this second, uh, our current score is our best score, so that means the map is okay. Um, if we, you know, do something with the map and kind of, oh, no, fuck it up a little bit, and um, your score suddenly goes down the toilet, you can press this revert to best and it'll like rewind all your mistakes. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to try and experiment with some stuff, okay? Okay. So, how do we get a good score? Well, there's a couple things you need to keep in mind when rebuilding borders on countries. Number one is, the, the terrain actually can help you in a lot of ways. Uh, if we go back to our little four spot and click on our terrain tool and also make the mouse just a tiny bit bigger for drawing purposes, uh, highlighted are both mountain ranges, which are the black spotted dot lines, and then rivers. Well, rivers don't really get that highlighted, but they do when you kind of mouse over them and, well, let's see, mouse over them, here we go, yeah, mouse over them like that, and then green gets shown up, you know, and that's what also the borderline tool does, it uh, makes your drawing cursor uh, not pass through mountainous terrain, so it's a really good tool to have, I quite like it, and I kind of like to keep it on most of the time. Just to also, you know, get that border dispute checked off. Uh, the second thing, and one of the more important things, kind of, that have been newly added, well, at least in the current level I'm at, um, is population. Now, if we go back to the population topography map, click on that, we are shown two things. One, the varying colors. So if you're having trouble discerning where the border is in stuff, Turn on the topography map, and it'll very clearly show blue and red uh, bumping into each other. You are also shown little spurts of blues and reds all over the place. Those are cities or heavily populated areas, and they are color-coded because they are, you know, wanting to be in a certain color. Now, we have a lot of varying colors here. Let's switch up to blue and see if we can't... Okay, that's blue already. That's red. Here, let's try and color in some blue. I can see there's some 
exclaves around, trying to get all of that. So let's press the exclave button and it'll erase all of that. Already our score has gone up tremendously because we are uh, putting people where they want to be. Uh, let's switch this now to blue, and I think this river... Oh, wait, that's not a river. Yes, it is a river. Oh, it's a giant lake. That's what it is. Lakes are weird when right uh, when uh, doing this. Let's see if we can fix the river here. Turn this back to blue. Go like this, and like this. And we'll do our best to kind of get all the blues and then get all the little tiny bits and whatnot. That looks like it's good. Revert back to something we had. All right, that'll work. That'll work to our advantage. Unfortunately, there are some outliers in the population that aren't exactly happy with how some of our placement is. You don't have to be exact, okay? Some red and some blue population can be in different places, in different areas. You're not gonna please everyone. And if you want a good score, you gotta please the big guys, not the little guys, unfortunately. But for now, this looks like it covers most of what we want. Now, it's time to go with the finite tool and try and go for borders that we think would look good. This is a natural border, and I'm thinking about getting that and that in on that. And already, our score has gone up. I want to actually get a little bit like so there. Huh? Yes, all right. Beautiful. So natural borders like mountains or rivers are really good on helping you make uh, good decisions. It maybe out it maybe helps outline where you're trying to go. Another thing is that um, I started that sentence and I didn't have a conclusion for it. Let's keep going. Uh, right, we're gonna go with red. I'm actually thinking of making this mountain range just a little bit. Um, like so. Oh, now I remember. Uh, the best kind of border, of, uh, population border here is a straight line. The less surface you have, um, the better the score will be. Hence why you kind of have a little zoom-in tool. Uh, you can minimize that real small. And do your best to kind of just... Oop, nope, wrong color. Do your best to kind of just... Uh, get that as close to perfection as you want. Without, you know, being perfect. Alright, so far so good. We are still somewhat on a lower thing here. So I think here could use a little bit of cleaning up. Yep, already our score went up. Just kind of notch off those uh, odd looking splotches. You know, make it a little bit more streamlined. No, oh, that went up. No, that went up. Okay. Making that look good. Uh, can we, if we go like this and like this, can we make, does blue want that lake? Can we make it look better? Actually, yes, we can. Blue can have the rest of that lake. And the river border will go up. We'll have a little diversion into the mountains here. That'll go up. We have a big area of blue here, which will stretch like straight on this way. That looks good. We we do have currently revert there. Um, currently we do have a good score, and people will sign the bill that gives us gives all of that permission. Now revert it back to what was before there. 
So we do have a good score. We can improve in places. I'm still not like 100% good at this game quite yet. So uh, I do have... Oh wait, the river did what go down. What I missed, I must have missed that. Color that in, does that go like, that goes down? No, that's good. Nope, nope. It just stayed the same score. Sometimes when the score stays the same, even though you've moved, uh, colored in some stuff, it tends to, uh, go a little, revert back to some other things. It's fine, though. I think, uh, otherwise, this is a very solid, um, solid paint by number, well, paint by numbers, MS Paint them up. This is essentially an MS Paint game. Uh, and then if we go off the topography map and population, it's a little harder to see the borders, but you can kind of see, I don't know, you can kind of see it a little, make it look good, kind of. I think this is good. I'll settle for a bronze, sign the treaty, yeah! We did good. We did. We got a bronze w rank, and uh, our next map is Alpine. Uh, I mean, that's one of quite a few maps, actually. And like I said earlier, there are some harder maps. Uh, there's also a resource thing. I haven't quite gotten to that part of the game, but I'm assuming that that's like a dispute of resources and stuff, uh, drawing which border gets which resource and stuff uh but at this point in my review and playing of this game this is a fantastically original game that uh, i don't think i've ever seen the likes of before so it is definitely a mention definitely a check out the link to this game will be in the description below hopefully you really enjoy it i think you will especially if you like being like really really precise in your uh coloring ms paints skills 